Time Warner Cable is pleased to be an underwriting sponsor for Carolina Week. Coming up on the February 19th edition of Carolina Week. Are the P2P buses really reliable? We'll have the answer. I'm Susan Tart, and I'll show you why many Chapel Hill workers are choosing to commute instead of live in town. In sports, we'll take you to the newest Coach K Court on Tobacco Road. Weathercaster Laura Pagano will have your Carolina Week four-day forecast. All that and one last look at your final two SVP hopefuls. Carolina Week starts right now. From the School of Journalism and Mass Communication at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, this is Carolina Week. Hello and welcome to the Monday edition of Carolina Week. I'm Alex Villarreal. And I'm Adam Rue. Thanks for watching. The campaign trail is heating up for the two runoff candidates for student body president. Candidates and their crews spent days parading in the pit and nights storming the dorms. Nick Neptune passed out flyers last Hi. night to students in Avery and Parker dorms. His communications director, Logan Lyles, says this week has been a second chance to connect with students. No campaign runs smoothly and always getting a second time to go through with the same candidate allows you to improve on the parts that you think you did badly on and it lets you redo the things that you think you did well. And Eve Carson is also gearing up for the final stretch run. Her campaign team used signs to encourage students to make Carson their new student body president. Students can vote in tomorrow's race by logging on to Student Central from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. And be sure to tune in right here tomorrow night at 10 for live election results. As part of his campaign, Nick Neptune staged a public breakup with the Board of Trustees Monday. I want predictability! I want accessibility! I want affordability! Especially with the students! Upset with rising tuition costs and years of unpredictable behavior, Neptune symbolically severed the 213-year relationship between the university and the board. The clefhangers helped set the mood while students gathered in the pit to watch the breakup. From breaking up to breaking in, many people wish they could better protect their homes from break-ins. Reporter Brendan Anderson tells us about a little-known service offered by the Chapel Hill Police Department. You might feel safe in your house. I feel pretty safe here because we're in a good location. We know all of our neighbors. There's six girls here, which, you know, safety in numbers, even though we are all girls. But it takes a thief only seconds to find a way into your home. There were more than 50 break-ins in Chapel Hill and Carborough over winter break. Maybe because not enough people talked with Officer Robin Clark. Officer Clark runs a program called Target Hardening, which is designed to make your home less attractive to intruders. The program gives homeowners a free inspection by a trained professional, and Clark looks for every detail. She checks the doors. But yeah, these, um, as you can see, this is, is just the plywood. This is kind of a retrofitted piece of plywood. It looks like somebody had knocked um, the one that was in there out before. And as, as you can see from the crack, it was not a very thick piece right. to start with. The windows. The metal seems to be pretty secure, but uh -huh. that's just a single plane glass yes. and it wouldn't take anything to break it. The lights. I am noticing a motion light up there. I'm not sure if it actually works or not. Right. And points like out it. other potential threats to your home security. Now, many homes have air conditioning units underneath a window. Now, that's an easy target for thieves. All I'd have to do is step up on the unit itself, step on this brick right here, and then just open the window. Clark makes sure to tell you ways to increase your safety. Lock that window mm -hmm. with that bolt mm -hmm. and keep your basement door locked. Well, After a security survey, time. that might surprise you. I'm surprised with what she found. I'm definitely humbled. I think we all were. Above all, Clark reminds that you got to think like a criminal to catch a criminal. And to prevent one from breaking into your home. In Chapel Hill, I'm Brendan Anderson, Carolina Week. To schedule a security survey for your residence, call the Chapel Hill Police Department at 919-969-2068. According to Chapel Hill officials, school bus drivers have to hang up their cell phones while on the job. The American School Bus Council wants to make it illegal for drivers to use a cell phone behind the wheel. 
Chapel Hill Transit drivers have already put their phones away, even though North Carolina doesn't have a cell phone ban. Officials say a statewide law makes sense because cell phones can distract the driver and put riders in danger. If you're out late at night, one way to get home is UNC's point-to-point -point shuttle service, the P2P. But st some students say the service is leaving them stranded. We already came. We're not coming back. You had your chance. Uh, you need to be out there when the, the van is out there. That's what sophomore Brian Quinn says happened one night last semester when he called the P2P shuttle to take him and a friend from Craig Residence Hall to Carmichael Hall. He says he didn't make it to the street in time because he was taking care of his friend who had too much to drink. I ended up having to walk past the P2P area where the P2P van waits just to get her back to her room. When classes are in session, white buses run on a loop through campus between 7 p.m. and 3 a.m. After 3, students can call the P2P and ask for a van to take them home. But Quinn says getting someone to answer the phone at 4 a.m. can be a challenge. And it just rings and rings and rings and you can call as many times as you want and no one answers. Campus police spokesman Randy Young says the university's size makes running the service more difficult. Certainly we're serving a campus population, campus community that exceeds 45,000. Two other students who refused to talk on camera said they too have had problems with the P2P, telling me the van showed up, but the driver told them to stop calling and then he drove off. Young says there are reasons why a P2P driver won't pick up passengers. A driver might not pick up a student uh, if they are not at an official campus location that is open. But Quinn was on campus traveling from one dorm to another. He says P2P operators are too concerned with the process and not worried enough about keeping students safe. If he had to give the shuttle system a letter grade? I'd have to say about a D. And if you have a problem with P2P service, Young says you should contact the Department of Public Safety during regular business hours the next day. For more information on how to get in touch with DPS, visit our website, carolinaweek.org. And when we come back, reporter Susan Tart shows us why taking the bus to work isn't even an option for many Chapel Hill workers. Why housing prices in Chapel Hill are making the trip to work a little longer.